Mine, just how drastic was the difference in fight? You know, we talked, we sat here on Saturday and, and talked about that yeah. Texas A&M game, but just the, the way your team responded to that game, how they played throughout this one. I couldn't agree more. Uh, just that was the message to our guys. We just won a game against a really talented, well-coached team. That, that team is going to play postseason, I would imagine, right? Don't have their numbers or their record in front of me, but a really good team. Um, quality SEC win after um, going four of 21 from three. You can win games like that. We haven't won a lot of games like that, um, especially, especially against the Power Five teams, um, our high major opponents. Uh, to win it in that fashion is a really good teaching moment you know, for our guys and for this program moving forward. Uh, last time we got a chance to play in front of our fans here at the Steg, it's been a great environment all year. I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy we were able to thank, you know, obviously we weren't packed tonight, but the, the fans that came and continued to uh, support these young men. And really happy for our three seniors, uh, RJ Sunahara, um, Russell Chua, who's played as well as he's played all season, um, Noah Thomason, who played really well again, and all three of those guys made it a point to want to thank our fans right when the game was over. Their idea, um, great stuff. It was a big win for us. And to moving forward to be a real player in this league, you, you've got to grow your toughness, you've got to grow your culture to be able to win more games like this. Um, that that was, a, it was a good step for us, especially bouncing back after the opposite end of the spectrum the other day. Dylan makes his first career start tonight. Just what have the last few weeks been like to lead up to that? And what did you see from him as he almost got a double double? He, he came to Georgia as a high basketball IQ, um, skilled, step out, shooting post player. And he's uh, developed his toughness, his motor. Um, he's playing more athletically. He's, just, he's learned how to play harder. You know, he's adjusted to this level. It's taken a little time, um, as it does for every freshman in this league, especially this league. And he's playing his best basketball at the end of his freshman year. Go again, another example, we go 421 as a team. He and Blue Kane as two freshmen both go 0 for 3 and 0 for 3, but played as hard as, as they've played all season. And uh, again, you can play quality minutes, you can play winning minutes. Um, you can help add to a winning culture without having to make shots. I like to make shots. I like to make a bunch of them. You know, and then you can be, you can be, you know, a bunch of people. But uh, I'm proud of those guys' effort. Just about uh, everything that had you had to do wrong to for them to have a chance at the end happened. Um, can you just talk about the stretch? You know, I mean, yeah, Russell's Russell's uh, flagrant, I guess it was at the end. Yeah, of we had fouls to give, and we were actually trying to foul. Yeah. Just a little bit, a little bit too aggressive. You know, we were we were aggressive up there, out there on the sideline with Justin Hill and R.J. Melendez, and then. Almost came up with the turnover, and Russell found himself in a, in a tough situation. And, um, but his aggressiveness, as I just told Chuck and those guys, for the other 39 minutes was was uh, positive for the most part. Did you guys discover something with Jabri on Sunday, or was it a practice injury that he had? No, it happened in the last game. Yeah, so he hasn't done anything since. Um, yeah, lower leg, ankle. Um, He's a, he's a guy that's always going to be engaged, though. You know, he's engaged in practice and engaged this morning. And, um, hopefully he gets, he gets back here pretty soon. In scouting for this game, did you guys see an opportunity work in the paint? And, and either way, just what did you say about how successful you guys were able to do scoring around the rim? The They've got two elite uh, rim protectors um, that are very tough to score on, whether it's your five or your, your one, right, and anyone in between. And so our, our approach to attacking their defense was a little bit different when those guys were in the game as opposed to when they played small ball. When they play small ball, um, they're as difficult to guard as anyone in our league. You know, with Brayfield at the five, um, but obviously when he's at the five, as hard as he is to defend on the other end. Um, offensively, we wanted to, to get some, some paint touches, and uh, Russell obviously took advantage and played really well. You know, looking uh, over the, it, a little bit of bigger picture, focusing out, um, if you look at the top teams in this league, it all took their programs a while to get going. 
is this uh, is this fit anywhere in the yeah I needed to see that this at this stage in terms of getting this rebuild I, where do you want it this time of year really for the most part in the middle of the season I, I I'm just I'm locked in on trying to beat Ole Miss I, I'm locked in on an off day tomorrow where we'll watch a ton of Auburn film and, and figure out how we can keep them in better for a while you know I guess the team has got a chance to make a, a really big run finish as strong as we possibly can. Um, but we're, we're building that. I, there's no doubt in my mind that, that we're going to get it done, um, that we're going to be even better next year. We're, we're better than we were a year ago. Um, no doubt in my mind we'll take another jump next year. Um, I've not put a time frame on anything. Just just trying to win each day, uh, do the best we can in, in player development and, and recruiting and scouting uh, and operating you know, at a high level. I thought we had a, our program had a good day today. We can with debris, is it a sprain situation where he's like, you know, day to day, or is, you know, with how little time's left, could this be something that ends this season? Um, I don't know. I don't, um, I'm anticipating him coming back. I guess I can say that. Is that okay for me to say, Mike? Sure. Um, I think, you know, it's always touchy with, with injuries, right? I want to protect, um, you know, his confidentiality, but, um, no, he just wasn't, he wasn't clear today. You know, he could be clear on Thursday. He could be, who knows? I don't know if you've had a technical before at Georgia. Maybe you have, but I don't remember. I don't think I have been on really good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you, we, you had to work hard. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Were you raising your intensity level like the team or what? Um, I don't know. I just, <laughs> um, who knows, man? Who knows? Just, uh, it's a big game. They're all, they're all big for us. And I'm not necessarily proud of, of any of that stuff. You know, I like to have, I like our officials. I do, you know, they're, they're, they're good people. And, I like to have um, regular conversation with them, and, and <laughs> I'm sure I, I'm sure my, my Irish skin turned a little red, so I'm, I should be embarrassed my behavior. Get back to Dylan just a second. The energy that he brought when he was in the game, he was awesome. That had to just how, how how impressed was that for you to see him? Back? I mean, just to have a guy that was playing above the rim, blocking shots, altering shots, getting extra possessions, finishing with dunks. Um, he, he, he fit in, and he, you know, he, he looked like a potential good SEC player, which is the guy that we recruited, and it's just nice to see. It's, it's one of the most rewarding things in coaching is watching guys develop right before your eyes, you know. And Dylan's a, um, I went down to the treadmill. Um, there's a treadmill at the end of the practice gym over there about a couple hours before the game for a few minutes. I needed to get out of it for a couple hours. But when I walk in the gym, <clears throat> he's in there shooting on his own. We had shoot around this morning, you know. Um, he's a guy that's just like Jabari. He's always in the gym, um, and he's a guy too that, in time, will be able to stretch it with his stroke to complement the other things that he did tonight. He's a talented guy. Uh, you know, uh, Blue and him played really, really hard tonight. And Silas continues to affect the game with winning plays. Um, you know, without necessarily needing to take a ton of shots. You know, he, Silas takes what the defense gives him. He's uh, He's a winner. He had four points, and I thought he really affected the game. Going back to just the last few days since a and you and know, talking about the fight, just what response did you see during practice? How did this team prepare getting ready for this game tonight? It was good. It, it was, um, again, not surprising. I've said it all year. I know you guys are sick of hearing it. Uh, had really sharp shoot around. Had a really good practice yesterday. The day before was more walkthrough, more mental resting. Get your legs back under you. Get with our training staff. Um, and yesterday we got after it. We we didn't go, you know, ninety minutes this this time of year, right? Um, it's uh, we we went short, but our guys went hard. They competed, and I would have been really surprised if we didn't play very hard tonight. And and, uh, and we did. Now whether or not we finished, how we responded to in game adversity, um, with ten minutes left. If we if we gave up a seven point lead, the look on our face, our body language, those things were up in the air, you know. Um, but we were better. I thought our defensive intensity, again, never wavered, even through um, Juju Murray's tough contested jumpers and floaters in the paint. He made some timely shots and kept game pressure on us. Meanwhile, we're missing some shots but we stayed the course outside of a couple possessions defensively that I wish we could have back where 
we're, we're a little disconnected and they're driving it you know, right up our backs and drawing fouls. Um, pretty sharp defensively. For this late in the year, for a team that's not projected as a five seed in the NC tournament, really proud of our approach tonight. Stegman's obviously been a place that's been pretty good to y'all this season. You talk about yeah. going and thanking the fans, but you know, how much of an emphasis was it to walk out of here as winners for the last time this year? It was big. It was big, and it um, more so a little bit of emphasis on hey, you got a chance to get the 16 win. We got a chance of momentum. We, you know, you, we talk about all those things. Finish your last home game, and but more importantly, just playing well, getting a little bit better, continuing to build. Um, and then afterwards, you look back and say, my gosh, you know, what a what a great way to finish your home stand. Um, and, and obviously, we wish we had, we had, had a chance to win a, another couple here at home, especially in, in a couple of those environments that were off the charts. Uh, but you know, spring break and and um, late in the year, I thought we had a pretty good crowd. You know, and the people that were here were were a part of it, and uh, they were a factor. And, and we're all appreciative as, as staff, uh, and as I know my players are too.